Good morning everyone, channel Gaia Kingdom. Today we're gonna speak to Julian Rose, Sir Julian Rose, uh, who is a British lord, who is British activist and organic farmer, a wonderful person who together with uh, Yadviga Wapata has been doing so much favor for not only British uh, farmers and British ecology and British consumers, but mainly for Poland, for uh, international, how do you say this name, Julian? International Coalition. International Coalition. The Polish countryside. Exactly. It's, it's such an honor for me because um, I've met Julian a few years ago and when I was in Poland and doing a protest against GMO. And when I could see his pure spirit and clean will to really come to the uh, agreement with the government to really try to push with something that really makes sense. Really, it's about having the clean and healthy food on our shelves, in our shops, in all the places uh, in Poland. And actually, um, it was a great story behind it, but basically Julian is not only involved in uh, genetically modified organisms campaigns, he's actually been doing this for many decades, spreading the awareness and making people realize how important it is about the environment we live in and also about the, the, the quality of food that we put in our mouth which is not not only to do with GMO, but it's so much to do with so many other things. So thank yes. you very much for joining us today, Julian. Uh, we're going to be talking about this because there's a great event coming on the 3rd of November here in, uh, well, here, when I say here, I'm in London, and we're going to be organizing a massive uh, fair day, which is going to be about spreading this important awareness about buying the organic food, uh, going vegan, and also about being educated consumer. So, welcome on board. Julian, how are you today? Good morning. Good morning. I'm very well. I, and I'm, I'm delighted to hear that you're taking this very strong entrepreneurial step forward to involve people in the community in uh, taking control of their destinies. Because actually that's the key issue now. Everyone has noticed that governments are not interested in protecting and taking care of people in spite of the fact that that's the concept behind democracy, they're actually more interested in power and in money and being re-elected. So the idea that communities will come together now in towns, in the countryside, in villages, wherever, and they will start uh, preparing the ground almost for a life, a different lifestyle, uh, one which is not to do with uh, neoliberal uh, globalist capitalism but one that's to do with caring for each other, enjoying life, sharing, enjoying beautiful food, beautiful environment, and appreciating and being in touch with nature. And that type of uh, feeling, once people get it, will inform the future. We don't really have to talk about or work out the details. The first thing is to feel it in your gut, in your mind, in your heart. And it strikes me that what you're trying to do is to pursue that road and congratulations for that. Well, thank you very much. It's an early stage, but so I'm glad you brought this up that um, you have your patronite over this idea because in let's be fair about it. Um, we can only succeed if we're really doing things together. And it's really high time for us to get this uh, you know, idea that integration is the really brave step towards uh, united communities and people who go beyond the sort of egoistic paradigm when they really self-serving and trying to be right over somebody else, which is all a lot of crap because I'm sorry by my French, but basically <laughs> what it is, is like the government's getting us to really come uh, against each other, trying to, you know, do the blame game, you know, this guy is doing this and he's voting for that uh, party, which is all hell of a lot of you know, uh, kind of twisted reasons why people can get angry against each other while they don't kind of see the common uh, dream, common problems. And that, you know, if we really look at this in the right perspective, we see more common things that are things that actually separate us. And then the actual clear picture arises that, you know, we can all live a fulfilling, nice lives and 
having healthy diet you know on our tables having healthy educational system having really kind of well thought of uh, urban aspects of architecture living in a good um, self-sustainable communities like with a free energy or at least very cheap energy which it doesn't have to cost so much we're paying now um julian you will be coming on the 3rd of uh, november this is this is going to be a special day because as i say we apart from organic farmers and uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, fair activities stalls with the uh, selling uh, food artists bookshops there's also going to be a place for uh, lectures and uh, educational sort of seminars now you're going to be one of the speakers and i'm so excited because before i send you this message that we're doing this i was really envisaging and hoping that you were going to be the one of the main guests and this is actually happening you've decided to do that uh, together with your lovely wife yadviga so um, let me just say we're very appreciative of that. Can you give give us a glimpse, like in few maybe sentences, what are the burning points that you should we should touch on and get people for action? What would it be? Well, the the real the burning points, which I I'm sure will come up and I will be talking about, really involve people being able to do two things simultaneously, which normally in society today they can't do which is to um, work with your deeper self towards truly understanding your relationship with your environment. And in order to do that, you have to know yourself, which means you have to be able to stop long enough in your very busy life to be able to meditate is a, is a word often used, but it doesn't have to be specifically meditation. It has to be just enough time and enough calm to start to listen to the voice in you, which is going to give you direction in life. Now, the second element, which has to be immediately connected to that, is that once that message becomes reasonably clear to you, you have to find a way to make it happen, to take action. And actually, when you consider the fundamental principles of life, of living, one of the very first things we need is good food. Yes. And we need good water. Yeah. And if you have good food and good water, and I'm talking about unpolluted and high <laughs> energy, your system, your uh, the microbes in your body, your cells and your immune system will all start talking to each other. And they'll all start saying, oh, you're on the right track now. And they'll give you a lot of energy. And, yeah. and that energy comes, improves your vision of what needs to be done in life and then your commitment to actually doing it yeah. now this is particularly important at this time because the streets of london are full of people doing what's called extinction rebellion <laughs> and the governments are in you know uh, shouting about brexit uh, everybody's running in all directions in a state of chaos and considerable amount of fear yeah. so at this moment in time you, you we can see very clearly that the predictions made by people like George Orwell and Aldous Huxley and many other writers, even writing in the previous century, that a type of chaos is being introduced into society, which is only benefiting people at the very top of the pyramid who want to control everything and they want to control us. Oh, yes. So once we recognize this, we're being attempted control, we start removing ourselves from our television sets we start removing ourselves from our iPhones, uh, particularly our smartphones. We start getting rid of all those things because that isn't communication. That's indoctrination. The people that control the information which goes on those machines is all <clears throat> indoctrination. And also they're spying on you while they're doing it. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Just like they can be following us at this very moment because mm -hmm. they're using this technique from uh, Skype. Yeah. But you know, you, one has to get some... Forms of communication well, we can going. say hello so, to NSA, <laughs> you know, we know you're doing this. So that's, that's what I'll be bringing up in my lecture. I'll mm. be really telling people what steps they should, I believe they can take to free themselves from the slavish commitment to the status quo yeah. and genuinely start discovering what freedom actually means. Yeah. <laughs> in this, I will also bring a little bit of a description of Hardwick, my estate, which is about 45 miles west of London, where for the last uh, 50 years of my life, I've been gradually building up a type of community 
which is based on pragmatic mm -hmm. as well as um, what you might call social, spiritual interests and concerns. I started converting this farm to organic in 1975, mm. and I was the, the third person in the UK and England to have a, a, a registered organic farm. So I've been at it for a very long time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's why you're the perfect person to come and do this speak on the 3rd of November. And yes. um, Julian, there is one thing which I always kind of uh, wondered. Now, so many people say why well, it's, it's so important to eat or, uh, organic and eat local. Now, how about this aspect of local? Because many, many things on our shelves of our um, food suppliers come from different countries or even come from different continents. Now, is this true that um, it's actually not so beneficial? Maybe um, it's really much more beneficial, simply put, to eat something that is growing on a local uh, area? And if that is so, why, why is that? Well, it's a very good question. Um, there's a number of reasons why it is definitely the case. And in fact, even at this point in time, uh, the researchers are discovering more and more reasons why eating local foods, your environment, is supporting your immune system better than when you're buying in from outside. Because, and this is very interesting, actually, because we are adapted to the place where we live right. and or place where we were born to a degree. Wow. So if we're adapted to that vibrational environment, the food coming from it is on the same wavelength as yeah. what we're adapted to. Yeah. If we're taking food from a completely different environment, let's say the tropics or someone oh, like yeah. that, this is on a totally different level. Oh my God, that's so energetic. fascinating. You know, like, yes. I, I can see even myself personally, although I, I follow these things, I start um, really getting so much interest into that. And I'm, I, must, I must, you know, put a bit of my blame on myself because I, I like oranges, for instance, and they obviously will not be coming from this climate, uh, from this area. So I'm consuming um, uh, actually a part of fruit which the structure molecules have been constructed in a different area of our planet. <laughs> yes. and, and well, that's, that's right. And, and, um, the basic principle goes, goes beyond this. This is the most fundamental from the health point of view. But if we widen our focus a little bit and look at the health, not only of ourselves, but of the total environment, other people, the energy complex, where we're living and all the rest of it, local has the buying in locally or eating locally or having local energy right. is supporting the economy of the community. Right. In other words, if you've got a farmer who you can go to or he can come to you, whatever, mm. with local cauliflowers and carrots and yeah. radishes and, and whatever it is and beautiful butter, mm -hmm. uh, what's happening is you're getting the best possible uh, quality of food for your vibrational level mm -hmm. but you're also supporting the person that's producing it oh yeah wow ah now that's the key because if you go to tesco or whatever you know and buy the stuff it's getting lost it's never getting back to that mm. farmer that mm. farmer who you buy who, who is getting the results if you like of the food that he sells to tesco is living on a slave labor wage yeah and probably in South America or Australia or New Zealand or China. Who knows? No mm. one knows because they don't even put where half the produce comes from. Mm. And then it's traveled for seven days, mm. lost all its vitamins and nutrients. Mm. Then it's wrapped in plastic, which is already a form of carcinogen. <laughs> yeah. And then it's displayed on a plastic shelf with horrible lighting. Mm. And then people come along and look at it whose minds are completely preoccupied with the status quo, with doing all the right things and getting a good job and what are they going to do that evening. So you can quite easily see totally cut off from the food chain. So joining up with a local production means you're getting the benefits and you're giving benefits oh, yeah. because it mustn't just be selfish health. Uh -huh. Well, I, I have this new saying like giving is a new taking. And if, yes. we, if we start recognizing that uh, sharing is good, giving is really, really good, and it feels good when you know how to give, and you give with joy, with a smile, it actually kind of uh, gives you this wonderful feeling. And I, I remember you talking about this when I met you um, 
and also when you had this lecture in Posca a few years back and you were mm. saying that there's nothing better than when you grow your crops and then you see them when they grow and then you go to the market and you sell it to people and oh, it's such yeah. a wonderful experience. This is true. Uh, and I think in, you know, in England uh, about 25 years ago, some uh, brave individual said, I want to try and start something called a farmer's market. Right. Actually, funny enough, they rang me up and thought I might have to give them some money. <laughs> to get them. I didn't have it much at the time, so I said, I'm very sorry, but very good luck. Mm. And sure, this lady went out and, and studied it in actually North America, in Maine and uh, Vermont area, where they were practicing the farmer's markets and they were becoming very successful. And then they started establishing the first farmer's market, I think was possibly in Bath. Mm. And um, from that, they spread out and spread out and spread out. Now, the original concept behind the farmer's market was that all the produce has to come within 30 miles right. of market and that at the market must be either the farmer themselves or the family of the farmer right. or someone who's working pretty much full time right. so that the customer meets the grower uh -huh. and, you know, and they get the real story. They mm -hmm. don't get some oh, middleman telling yes, something yes, in between yes, story yes, for yes, the benefit yes. of himself, usually. Uh -huh. uh, that's farmer's market concept is really very positive and very close to what is needed on a much bigger scale. But what happened, unfortunately, is because of the fact there really weren't enough growers and farmers out there willing to do direct sales, and most of them prefer to let their stuff be taken by wholesalers because it's much simpler. You don't have to get in your car, make things and have a stand and, you know, yeah. If you don't want this immediate connection with the public or you don't feel good with it, of course, people aren't going to do it. Mm. So the point is, the rules and the regulations got somewhat shifted and the 30 mile radius thing slipped and slipped. Mm -hmm. And now you get people showing up sometimes with wine coming from you know, South America mm -hmm. and it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So what I think you're starting again with and a number of people like you is to try and bring this back to, to the basics, to the real roots of the whole thing again. Oh, yeah. And try and rebuild based on a consensus of opinion about people who are really involved in growing the food with the same type of people who are really in, involved in enjoying it and sharing it. Yeah. And, and once those two get together, the producers and the consumers, it'll form a very powerful meeting point. Oh, yeah. You see? And that will inform, as we said at the beginning of this interview, that will inform how the rest of the things develop. But that, first of all, has to happen, yeah. possibly almost ritualized form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Every week, come to a certain place, come oh, to yeah. a certain place. Say, people get to know each other more and more. And then all of a sudden, someone wants to put up a 5G mast right beside your place. <laughs> and all of a sudden, what have you got? You've suddenly got a group of people who are 100% committed to not letting it happen. Absolutely. Because absolutely. they absolutely understand what it is they're defending. Yeah. And they absolutely know the, the value of what they're defending. Oh, yes. And they know that value is connected with the divine, if you want to yeah. put it in very strong words. So then you suddenly got exactly the people needed yes. to support the ongoing and okay. this is clear enough message. Thank you for bringing this up, Julian. And it is about the connection with our natural laws, which are the, the universal laws. It's connecting to divine. And, you know, somebody who thinks different way, that means they've definitely been brainwashed because there is so much in danger in this type, type new technology of 5G. And I suppose this is a whole different new subject which I will happily speak about with you maybe in future because uh, we really need to, to you know push with the you know uh, spreading the awareness and making people empowered to not being afraid because you know the, a lot of a lot of really what is going on is about the fear reaction and and a lot of people really understand and they are actually um, contracted because they don't know what to do but when exactly. we when we're building a strong community where we really get there and talk and we treat each other with empathy and and uh, like on a basis like we're equal and we're friends and we mm -hmm. are together as one as one organism i would almost say then there's nothing that can actually stop us because we create such a massive strong bond that we yeah. you know just this is overthrowing any type of authority and i hate this word because there is no authority whatsoever but 
also yes, what I want to say, but it's, it's not so much about being a rebel. It's just, just, just being standing in your values and standing in knowing yourself, right. understanding, you know, our true selves and, 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 you know, nothing can be over this, right? No, that's exactly right. And, and the more one is uh, brave enough mm. as a group of people to confront the reality and not try and escape from it, the more help we get from the divine sources. And this <laughs> yes. has been the main experience of my whole life. Because yeah. I've been, what they call, swimming against the tide ever since I was about 18 years old, and I'm now 72. Wow. And so every time I've decided, oh, yes, I actually can do that, I didn't think I could, but I think maybe I have to try. Every time they've come to support me in each new step I've taken, and it gets stronger and stronger. So everybody watching this interview and who comes on November the 3rd, you know, let's share that thing, because... We need courageous people now. We don't need people turning their backs or going into some escapist meditation or whatever it might be. Uh, we really do need people who want to bring out the best in themselves, their, their genuine potential, and share it with others. And that's what it's going to be all about. Absolutely. Well, Julian, that probably sums this up, because we don't <laughs> want to really give away all the fantastic and inspiring information that you have. For everyone who's there, who's watching this video, please do come on the 3rd of November to listen to what Julian and Yagdi Viga have got to say and to sh shake their hands and congratulate them as well for the inspiring spirit which has been really never extinguishing for many, many years. And now to say thank you for inspiring other generations for action because that's exactly what we're here to do. That we're here to become empowered, we're here to become one and that's why I would love everyone to come here to the West London, 3rd of November, 2019, Masbro Center. This is going to be a, a nature and well-being Gaia Kingdom Fair. Together as one with nature, we are stronger. Julian, thank you very much for this inspiring talk. And um, I'm not making this video too long because, as I said to everyone, there's going to be whole lecture of Julian for at least one hour and there's going to be another conversation with Jadwiga, who's, uh, who's doing a lot of activities um, uh, for Polish countryside, and she's also going to have a very inspiring talk. For now, yes. for now thank you very much, uh, Julian, to you, of course, and uh, we'll see you on the 3rd of November. Yes, indeed, and I look forward to meeting you all. Goodbye for now. Goodbye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.